my name is Nikki and this is Ask GUG Evangelism Edition, hosted by me. Now in a second, we're going to have me, Cody, and new staff member Patrick Ryan answering your questions about evangelism. But before we get to that, I wanted to give everyone another thank you for the Twitch Drive, as if there hasn't been enough of those already. But seriously, whatever you did, whether it was praying, or coming over and being goofy with us, or donating, we love that you did it, and we will put your time and your prayers and your money to good use, I promise. Thank you for helping us grow this ministry and being GUG. You rock, guys. We love you. How do you witness to people who don't believe in the Bible? You see this book, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. You read this book, you memorize this book, you recite this book, you sleep this book, you eat this book, you breathe this book, you are everything this book, you tell people this book, essentially. Okay, well, I'm getting a little bit over the top, but there's actually a specific study about defending faith and trying to talk to people who don't believe in the existence of God, and it's called apologetics. There are whole Bibles with commentary on apologetics, there are books created about apologetics. I believe the C.S. Lewis Institute has, if it's not already centered around, um, it has a subsection that's dedicated specifically to apologetics. I remember a guy can even speak in our church about it. Anyway, apologetics is a word that you want to know and the word that you want to look into if you want to get good at talking to people who do not believe in the existence of God. The study of apologetics is basically making faith reasonable. God calls us to live by faith in the unseen, but just because it's unseen doesn't mean that we have a blind faith. There are reasons we believe what we believe, and that is essentially what apologetics is. Proving that God can exist, not that he does exist. And as my pastor has said many, many times, you're not going to argue someone into Christianity. You're not going to present enough persuasive arguments for them to say, oh, well you make a very fascinating point. I guess I'll be a Christian now. No. Our job is a messenger. It's not um, convicting them, it's not changing them. That's God's job. What we are called to do is to present the Bible, not to make people into Christians. And that's something very specific that I think all of us need to remember. So, um, gee, I got my tea there. Apologetics, check it out. I'm an introvert who's terrified of talking to people. How does someone get over that fear? Is there an easier way to evangelize the strangers? So I am naturally an extrovert, but I've slowly become an introvert over the years. I think something that a lot of introverts don't want to hear, but need to, is that there is a difference between not wanting to talk to people and being kind of uncomfortable, which I totally understand, and being afraid to talk to people. You may never actually feel comfortable talking to people, but you can teach yourself to be able to do so. That being said, there are a couple things that I think you should try. The first one being to make videos just like this, post them on YouTube. See, Mitchell Davis, he runs this YouTube channel called Live Lava Live but he was afraid to talk to people when he started. It was through these one-sided interactions that he finally became comfortable with talking to people and now he films commercials for different companies. Something he wouldn't have been able to do if he wouldn't have fought that fear. Videos are great because you're talking to nobody. You're talking simply to a camera in your room probably the most comfortable place. Yet that one video you make could have more impact than you actually even talking to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Now that's the best advice I have. The other one could work for some people, but not everybody. And that is to speak in front of large groups, which some people this may work for, other people probably think I'm crazy right now telling introverts to talk to a lot of people as opposed to one. If you get the opportunity to talk to like 20 or 30 different people at the same time, it's easy to not look at them as people and look at it as a whole group, kind of block out that they are actual humans. One of the biggest reasons I think it's easier to talk to big groups is that they can't talk back to you. It's not a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's you talking, them listening, and you don't really have to worry about them saying something that you don't want them to or won't expect. But again, if that's uncomfortable, video. What are your thoughts on evangelism in general? The, I will say, the topic this week is not one that I relate to strongly because I have not done anything that most people would probably consider typical evangelism, going door to door, going on mission trips, uh, standing on the side of the road and thumping a Bible or passing out tracts. In fact, some of those things kind of annoy me and I'm not sure that they actually contribute much to the kingdom of God. I'm more about developing relationships and letting it come up as, you know, organically. Um, you know, you go to lunch with someone and they 
their custom I could say or you can use that as an opportunity you can say hey please don't talk like that around me and a lot of times they'll ask why now you have an opportunity to tell them that the reason why you don't like that is because of your faith in Christ and that scripture says that you shouldn't talk like that um, things like that how do you keep your cool when you're trying to share with a really arrogant and annoying person? <sighs> There's no easy answer to that. It really varies from person to person, temperament to temperament. Some people it's easy to trigger, some people it's not. I know that I have an unusual propensity to be erupting with rage in my mind but still keeping a level head for whatever reason. I always bring it down to the level of who am I serving and why am I serving. Um, it really comes down to the level of trusting God and realizing your human nature in relation to Him. It is my belief that everything that we do in this life is to gain control somehow. Every single action, thought, and emotion is centered around this need for control. So whenever we're getting annoyed with someone who's arrogant or pompous or anything like that, um, I think it's because on a subconscious level we recognize that we are somehow losing control of the situation and that upsets us. So keep that in mind, but also keep God in mind and keep your mission in mind. Your mission is not to convince people to be Christians. Your mission is not to turn people into Christians. Your mission is to present the gospel as best you can and let them make their own choice. God gave us free will for a reason. He wants us to choose Him personally, not have someone else choose for us. So think of it as if you were just giving a presentation in class. You're not trying to convince people that Jupiter is the best planet in the solar system. You are just giving them facts about Jupiter and letting them come to their own conclusion. And then also remember that uh, God is bigger than this annoying person. You don't want to get on his bad side, but all the same, you're winning brownie points by talking to this really annoying person. The more that you suffer for your faith, the more that you're going to get rewarded in heaven. So no matter what, it's going to end well for you just by having an interaction with this annoying person. So these are a couple of things to keep in mind, but just deep down, remember that you're not doing this for you and you're not doing this for him, you're doing it for God. How would you tell a complete stranger about Jesus at a convention? Going back to my last question about me being an introvert, I like to talk to large groups, so for me, it's all about panels. I don't have to worry about what they're gonna say to me, I could just tell everyone at the same time. At GUG, that's what our plan is going to be. We're gonna be doing panels when we're able to, we're gonna do a booth. And of course, if you wanted to, you could also just hand out tracks at the convention, but I tend to think that people just throw those away and don't actually look at them, so start a panel. How would you evangelize to a woodchuck in regards to his sinful chucking of wood? Oh, I gotta be honest, if you don't know the answer to this question already, you're probably never going to know the answer, you should probably stop asking. Or maybe you should ask somebody who really knows, because this is Geeks Under Grace, we're not Jack Hanna. He probably knows. You should ask him. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for the opportunity to answer your questions. They were a lot of fun. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you here again next Thursday.